So we just solved absolute value equations. Now let's solve absolute value inequalities, which are a little bit more complicated. So we're going to look at the differences in the different inequalities that we will write. When we have an absolute value, we need to pay attention to the direction. Right now I have a less than, so this is a less than. Now I write it like that, which is kind of stupid, but it helps me to remember that once I get my absolute value by itself, if my inequality is a less than or less than or equal to, I'm going to be using an and. So an and tells me very specifically that this could be written as negative four is less than x is less than four. Well, you might be saying, well, where did that come from? Well, I know it's an and question, and and questions can be written as a triple inequality, which is not a mathematical term. I'm just calling it that because there's three of them. Um, because really what I did is I said x is less than four and x is greater than negative four. Now, if I put those together, if I put the negative four first, notice it's pointing at the negative four, and then x is less than four, and that's where that came from. So this is my and less than inequality. Whereas this is a, oops, hold on. This is a great or, great or. So whenever we have a greater than, once again, once that absolute value is by itself, it's an or. So I'm going to say x is greater than 4 or x is less than negative 4. So I'm still writing it twice. The first time I write it just as it looks. The second time I write it with the opposite sign and the opposite direction, both. So this is how I would write it using or. So let's take a look at a couple that are obviously a little more difficult than the simple ones we just did. Just as always, I want to get the absolute value by itself before I make any decisions about whether or not there are solutions or if it's an and or an or. So before I even look at that, I'm going to add the, or so sorry, subtract the four from each side and get the absolute value of y minus 15 is less than 19. Now I can look at it and say, okay, this could work. It's a less than question, and whenever I'm dealing with an and question, the easiest way is to take the value, make it negative, stick it on the left side, and then write what you have left over, because this is two inequalities. It's just written in a more compound fashion. Now subtract, I'm sorry, add 15 everywhere. So negative 19 plus 15 is negative 4. Um, y minus 15 plus 15, obviously those things cancel. 19 plus 15 is 34. And now that's my answer. Um, use interval notation and graph. So if I were to graph this, I'm going to put the negative 4 and the 34. The graph would be an open circle on negative 4 because it's not or equal to, an open circle on 34, and everything between is shaded because remember this is always the betweens when we're dealing with an and that looks like this. And in interval notation, that would be negative 4 comma 34. Both are open circles, so both are open brackets. My second one, same idea. Before I decide anything, I have to get the absolute value inequality by itself. So don't distribute the 5. Get rid of it. So I have 2w plus 1. Absolute value is greater than or equal to 3. This is a greater question, which means I'm going to write 2w plus 1 is greater than or equal to 3, or actually use the word or, and then 2w plus 1, the left side remains unchanged. I'm going to flip the inequality, and I'm going to change the sign. And again, we change the sign because we ch flip the inequality because we change the sign. And now I'm just going to solve two inequalities. So subtract one from each side, divide by two, keep that or word in there. Uh, subtract one from each side, divide by two, 
so I have w is less than or equal to 1 or w is greater than or equal to negative 2. If I had my negative 2 here and my 1 here, I know, oops, let's put arrows on each end. I know that I'm looking at w is greater than or equal to 1, so that would be a closed circle on 1, shaded to the right. Or w is less than or equal to negative 2, that's a closed circle shaded to the left. Again, these help me to determine which direction to shade because my w comes first. Um, in interval notation, that would be negative infinity up to negative 2, not including infinity, but including negative 2. And also, again, union from 1 to infinity. Again, 1 is included, infinity is not. Awesome job on the last ones. Here are two similar questions for you to try. So press pause, take your time on them. Do them both. Make sure you do the graphs and interval notation, and then press play to check your work. All right, first thing I'm going to do on the first question is add 12, because I really want this x plus 9 in that absolute value to be by itself. So when I add 12 to each side, I get 26. Now I'm happy because I have the absolute value by itself. I'm going to write this two times. Um, actually, this is a gray tour, so I am going to write it two times. I'm going to write x plus 9 is greater than or equal to 26. Then I'm going to keep the x plus 9 the same, flip the inequality, and flip the sign on the solution. And then I'm going to solve both. Subtract 9 from each side. So I get 17, subtract 9 from each side, so I get negative 35. So those are my two solutions. It's an or. Let's look at my graph. Negative 35 is to the left of 17. If I were to graph this, this would be a closed circle on 17, shaded to the right, because those are values greater than 17. Closed circle on negative 35, shaded to the left. In interval notation, my first part of my solution is negative infinity to negative 35. Keep the 35 closed. Union from 17, which is included, up to infinity, which is not included. For my second question, first thing I'm going to do is divide by 3. 2x minus 5 is less than 7. Now I can write it twice, but since this is an and, less than question, then I can actually just write it as negative 7 is less than 2x minus 5 is less than 7, and then solve. So I'm going to add 5 everywhere. Negative 2 is less than 2x is less than 12. Divide by 2 everywhere, negative 1 is less than x is less than 6. My graph, obviously not drawn to scale, would have an open circle at negative 1, an open circle at 6, and be shaded between those two values. And my solution in interval notation, very similar, negative 1 to 6. Since they're both open circles, they're both open brackets.